Hey everybody, it's John Hope Bryant, and uh, I'm live. Welcome back to the Silver Rights Series. Uh-oh, let me get the, I was about to tease um, my IT guys, but now I can't tease them because they're going to mess with me and say that uh, uh, I didn't know what I uh, Let me see here. <laughs> I should have just left it alone. Let me see here. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'll, I'll be with you in just a minute. Uh, this is what I get because God, God don't like ugly. Okay, you can hear me fine. Just let me know you can hear me uh, just fine in the broadcast evening. Let me know you can hear me. Um, let me know you can hear me before I continue. I see everybody joining on. Can you hear me? Just tell me that you can hear me. Please confirm that you're getting the audio. Evening, everybody. So glad to see you too. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Glad to see you too. Just making sure, okay, yes, you can hear me. Okay, great. So uh, this is John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope, um, and uh, I'm uh, trying to lead a movement of civil rights <laughs> while at the same time uh, learning to operate my own digital device. <laughs> uh, I'm doing, uh, yes, they can hear me great, great, thank you. I'm doing one maybe a little better than the other. Uh, John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope, uh, the first nonprofit financial services network for the poor, the underserved, the working class, the struggling class, the teetering class, those with too much month at the end of their money. That means you and me, author of How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, Love Leadership, Banking Our Future, and soon, coming up in the fall, the memo. Let's get into this. Uh, before we get into the session, I want to <laughs> acknowledge to Trevor uh, Travers, who uh, is located here in Atlanta, and Jamie. Uh, Nelson, who is in, who who, who uh, left me and went to California for a week, I'm able to do this by myself without you, my IT guys, and with uh, Leanna, I'm, I'm able to, to manage myself uh, digitally without you. You can see I'm doing it in front of the conference room because I never give up. So they'll they'll get a get, big kick out of that. Um, so um, I'm uh, uh, going to talk today as we kick off the 2017 Civil Rights Series. Hey, Bobby, signing on. As we kick off this 2017 Civil Rights Series, I'm going to talk about uh, living your best life. Living, hey, good evening, living your best life. I want you to live your best life. And this is a little bit inspired by Oprah Winfrey. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, stress without, run, around, without, money, without worry, exactly the topic. Uh, this is a little bit uh, of inspired by Oprah Winfrey, who gave me her Use Your Life Award. Um, uh, and uh, it's also the civil rights movement, mixing financial literacy, financial inclusion, economic empowerment uh, with spiritual wealth uh, in a mix that says that you don't have to have money to be wealthy. You don't have to have money to be wealthy. So I want you to live your best life, and we're going to do a whole series this year on living your best life. Best life. Today's video is, uh, uh, is stress without worry. Now I'm looking at the, the comments here, but I'm going to get into this topic and answer many of the comments when I get to my next uh, work location this evening. I'm at my office tonight here in Atlanta. So stress without worry. What do I mean by that? If you're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, then why pray? I'm going to repeat that. If you're going to pray, then why worry? If you're going to worry, then why pray? So, is stress in my life? Yes. Um, there's many things I can stress about. I can stress out about my payroll. I can stress out about my professional life, my personal life, at times my spiritual life, my emotional life. I can stress out and worry about things that haven't happened yet and things that happened yesterday. I can stress out and worry about whether you like me, if that's important to me. I can stress out and worry about what's going on in Washington, D.C., or what's going on uh, in Africa. But whether I worry about it or not, none of it's going to get any better. 
I'm going to repeat that. This is very important. Because whether you, whether you believe you can and whether you believe you can't, you're absolutely right. I'm really trying to retrain and reframe your mind. I'm make sure that you're getting this. Stress without worry. Exactly. I'm trying to reframe and retrain your mind and give you a software upgrade on how to live. Uh, control what you can control. Exactly. So let me come back to it. I could stress and worry about everything, my mother and her health, my sister, my family members, but is that going to make anything better? No. In fact, it just makes it worse. If I'm going to worry about my mother or my cousin or my in-laws or whatever, um, am I making them any better? Is my worry advancing their life? Is my worry hurting me? In the same time, absolutely, it's hurting me and not helping them. The only thing that can help you is to understand what the flight attendant tells you when you're in the plane. When you're in the plane and the plane is going down, the flight attendant says put an oxygen mask on your face first and then your child. Because if you can't save you, you cannot save them. Charity starts at home. I said that my word today was strength. So true, she said. I said today, uh, yesterday in a, in a blog post about my word of the year, I pick a word every year, that my word was strength. I don't mean strength as in physical strength. I don't mean strength as in brawn. I don't mean strength as in bravado. I don't mean strength as in player, you know, uh, uh, player hating or player congratulating or acting like you're uh, somebody you're not. I don't mean strength as in being loud or being boisterous or bragging. I mean strength is in knowing who you are, being reasonably comfortable in your own skin. Just saying I am who I am. I'm not as good as my compliments. I'm not as bad as my criticisms, but I am who I am, and I'm God's child, and he made me to win. And everybody's my friend. So if everybody's your friend, you hate nobody, and you've got love for everybody, don't you know that lowers your level of stress? Do you know how much energy it takes to have negative energy? You know it takes 37 muscles, 38 muscles to frown, and 8 muscles to smile. So why are we smiling more of the time? Why are we more joyous more of the time? But let me get back to something a bit more practical, which is this whole issue of stress without worry. I've got many stresses in my life, but it doesn't do any good to worry about it. In fact, when you worry about it, if you watch my video from last week when I was in Washington, D.C., and I talked about there's a minute and only 60 seconds in it, and I said if you spend 20 seconds worrying about the past and another 20 seconds worrying about the future, the, the, the past has already happened. You can't do anything about it. It's gone. The future hasn't happened yet. It hasn't even come. Neither one of them are true. But now you've got 20 seconds left, but then you spend 20, 10 seconds of those seconds being anxiety-ridden. 10 seconds of those 10 seconds being anxiety ridden. And now you got five, 10 seconds less left, and now you don't know what to do with 10 seconds in a whole minute because it's not enough time to get in it. So what you do is you freeze. You become like a deer caught between headlights, and you just freeze. You actually don't live your life. You don't move forward. You don't know what to do, and so now you're stressed and overwhelmed. Take some, wor some words out of your dictionary. Can't and impossible. Remove them out of your dictionary. Understand that only in the dictionary does the word success come before the word work because it's actually alphabetical. Every place else, work comes before the word success. And love is work. Love is work. Not love is laziness. Anti-love is evil. Evil exists. It's very rare. Most people are just lazy, physically lazy, financially lazy, spiritually lazy, emotionally lazy, intellectually lazy. They just don't want to do the work. Being a good person is a lot of work. Loving your enemies is a lot of work. Loving those player hating you who mean you no good is a lot of work. Showing up on time for work is a lot of work. Staying out late for work like I'm doing now is a lot of work. Raising your children's right is a lot of work. Pursuing your passion, uh, be it sports or motorsports like me, is a lot of work. Pursuing a mission like civil rights is a lot of work. Becoming the first of anything or the best at anything is a lot of work. No matter what you do or how you do it, it's going to be a lot of work, and that's going to create stress. But what's the alternative, by the way? Doing nothing? Giving up? Giving in? Oh, I, 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 shouldn't, go to, I shouldn't get rest. I'm just going to wake up. I, I shouldn't take a bath. I'm just going to get dirty. 
I shouldn't work hard. I'm just going to get fired. I mean, that's just a negative attitude. Get away from those people. Come back to the point of stress without worry. I'm going to say it again. If you're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, why pray? So Louisville, Kentucky is in dire need of civil rights. We desperately need hope. They are drained. Okay, I'm coming. I see somebody say, I so needed this. Great, I'm coming. We're coming straight at you. Civil rights in the suites, not just the suites. As Andrew Young, Ambassador Andrew Young, Dr. King's aid in the civil rights movement said to me, we got to launch this movement from the head up. We got to think our way out of poverty, not fight our way out of poverty, not kick our way out of poverty, not frustrate ourselves out of poverty. Now let me get to why another reason why you shouldn't stress. I want you to stress but not become de-stressed. I want you to have pressure if you can instead of stress. Pressure is internally generated. Stress is externally uh, generated. But I want you to have stress or pressure, preferably pressure but not worry. Because when you worry, you're actually stressing your organs. And I think the disease is in many ways dis-ease. Disease, I'm just watching the comments, make sure that you're, we're on the same page. Disease is in many ways dis -ease. Ease. So if you're stressing all the time, if you're unhappy with yourself, if you're unhappy with somebody else, you're spending time worrying about something you cannot control, then you are stressing your life. You are stressing your organs. You are putting something on you that God never intended. You see, you're meant for hope. You're built to last. God will never put anything on you that you cannot handle. But you've got to believe that first. Or all hope <laughs> is lost. So I want you to remember what I said. If you're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, why pray? And if you have a minute and 60 seconds in it, watch the video that I did last week. If you got a minute and there's 60 seconds in it and you spend 20 seconds worrying about the past, which you cannot do anything about it. It's done. Or the future, which you have not even gone to or gotten to yet, you're crossing bridges ahead of time. You've got only 20 seconds le left to live your life, and you spend 10 seconds of that anxiety-ridden. No wonder you're stressed and overwhelmed. And if you use, understand that disease is mostly dis-ease, yeah, there's something that's her hereditary, but if you go in the hospital worried and thinking, I'm not going to survive, there's a 50% chance you won't survive. So now you have to light up that hope inside of you. You've got to decide the glass of your life is half full, not half empty. Half full, not half empty. It's a decision. It's a belief. It's faith in something large and more important than yourself. Then you open up more of that 60 seconds to have you present in it. You pull away the worry about the past. You pull away the worry about the future. You pull away the stress about the moment. And you become present in the moment. That's why they call the present a gift. And now you give yourself more time to solve this thing, and then you realize that by just worrying about something, you're actually and getting hot all the time and getting angry all the time. When you're getting angry, you're cooking your organs. You, you meet somebody who's 40 years old, they look like they're 80. Have you, have you noticed that, right? You meet somebody who's 40, 50, they look like they're 70 or 80 years old because they're worrying about everything. They spent their whole life worrying, and then they start drinking, and they start doing drugs, and forget about the worry, see? And they're, and they're prematurely aging. Because your body was not designed for that kind of worry. So now, when you get hot all the time, you get angry all the time, you are, you're 80% water, you are boiling your organs. This is physics, this is math, this is financial literacy. It's also spirituality in the same breath. Not religion, because you see I have all religions on my wrist, because I think that we're all one, we're all global citizens, and we fight over stupid stuff. So as we go into 2017, I want you to get your mind right, your soul right, your spiritual right. I want you to suit up, gear up to become a civil rights soldier because we need you out here in these suites, not just in these streets. We need you to focus on the issues of class and poverty, not race in the color line. Because if you're fighting your neighbor, you're fighting the person that you need to be partnering with as other nations try to take our stuff try to take our position in the world as a so-called leader. But you got to, as my friend Bernice A. King said, you got to reclaim your democracy every single day. This is my country, not my country. This is my country. I claim it. I claim where I stand, and I claim who I am, and I'm not going to worry about anything. Practically, you can't do anything about it. 
whether you worry about it or not. What's the point? What's the point? Is it making you any better? No, it's making you worse. And that's the second point, is not only can you not do anything about it, it actually ages you.